this is a reminder video on how to do a shadow wrap heel. It's a short row heel that is really nice. Um, doesn't cause any holes, no gaps in the what some folks call the intersection where the instep joins back with the heel. There's no holes here in the turn of the heel. It's just really nice. Um, there are a lot of videos that um, show tutorials on how to do this. So I just thought I would make a reminder video. That way I can just have one in my playlist all the time that I can just quickly find instead of having to research the one video that makes sense or multiple videos and kind of put them all together. Um, I'm using my must stash yarn, which is self-striping. And this brown or chocolate covered yarn is, I believe, Malabrigo. And the color is Cordovan, which I believe is no longer, it's no longer made anymore. But mustache yarn does make this colorway. I'm not sure if they're going to continue to sell it. It's a, that's the name of it, Cascaros. Um, it's an Easter colorway that they made. Um, but it's turning out really nicely. And normally I don't like, I guess you could call it crazy colors. Um, just a whole bunch of variety. So this is actually nice. I don't mind this at all. It's kind of refreshing. Um, also wanted to share these neat little stitch holders, or sorry, needle holders that I found on Etsy from a shop called Knitting Cords. And it comes in a pair of two along with the silicone lifelines that you can find at a lot of craft stores nowadays. Um, it was a total of $14. Not bad for two extremely long lifelines and two of these tiny little mushroom head needle holders. So there's a little spring inside and you just squeeze. It's definitely a squeeze. And you just push your needles right through and it'll sit on the needle, but I like to put it on the cable cord. That way when it hits the needle, it won't come off really at all, not unless I really, really pull. If I hold it on the needle, it will move, but once it goes on the cord, that little ceiling in there really does latch on and it gets caught in the join or onto the join of the needle and the cable. So I thought this was a cute, um, one, it's cute, and two, it's really helpful. It's not a gimmick. Um, and I found uh, quite a few things um, for knitting and crocheting, crafting can be kind of gimmicky and a waste of money, but this was actually worth it. So getting into the heel, I've already put 32 stitches on my magic loop. It's just a giant cable needle. So I can eventually put this other sock back onto it. So it's just hanging for now. And I have 32 stitches here. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, two, four, six, eight, 10 and two, just to triple check myself. And I've already woven in my cordovan, the chocolate yarn on the other side. So when I was knitting on this side, I just went back and forth, um, putting this yarn on top of what was the main color, the uh, mustache yarn. I just kept putting it on top, back and forth, back and forth so the yarn would get trapped in there. So I'm going to go ahead and get my 
new working yarn into play. Move that to the back. And for the reminder video here, I'm going to go ahead and use stitch, mar um, stitch markers. But once you see the stitches, you won't need the stitch markers um, unless you just want to use them as safeties, basically, so you know where your sections are. There's a total of three. Um, you'll have at least four 64 stitch count sock. You will have 11 stitches here on the right, 11 stitches here on the left, and 10 stitches in the center. The two 11s on the left and right, those will become double stitches. Some people call them twin stitches, and the center 10 are just plain regular stitches, knit stitches the entire time. So that's why I have the stitch markers, so I can go ahead and kind of show where the sections are. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to go ahead and knit the first row here all the way to the last stitch. Nothing special. And I'm using the Haya Hayas. This is size 1.5 US, 2.5 millimeter. These are the sh uh, super short. I think these are about four inches. And I'm not gonna fast forward through this reminder video, so this is going to be in real time. So definitely get yourself a snack or a cup of something if you'd like. Two, four, six, eight, nine, 10, 11. I'm gonna put my little milk and cookie on. And it's literally a little milk drop on top of a chocolate chip cookie. That's why I call it that. So two, four, six, eight, ten, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then put my chocolate chip cookie on top of the milk drop there. And if anyone happens to be watching, I got my stitch markers from, um, it's a shop that I found on Instagram called Clay Bay, B-A-E. And she has a lot of cute little, and these are little um, stitch markers. They're not large, like my Simply Serving um, stitch markers that I get, where these are, you know, at least inch tall where these guys are just super tiny so let's continue ten and this is eleven the last stitch I'm going to zoom in a little bit for a second. So on the last stitch, what you're going to do is lift the bottom right leg of this last stitch up onto the left needle and knit it. And then put it right back onto the left needle. So. You see how you have your current stitch on the left needle? What you're going to do is look for that bottom right leg right underneath it. And you're just going to slide your right needle right on under, put it on the left needle, and definitely hold it. I use my 
middle finger just to kind of give it some pressure to make sure the stitches don't slide anywhere. And I go ahead and knit that leg and then slide it right off back onto the left needle. And now I'm going to turn and I'm going to now purl to the last stitch. Give that a good tug. Okay, that's 10 stitches there. So this is the 11th stitch on the left side that we now need to work. Two, four, six, eight, ten, and that's the 11th stitch. So being that I need to purl and make this basically a double or a twin, whatever you want to call it, I need to make sure that my working yarn stays in the front. So. And I keep my pinky, with these short needles, I keep my pinky on the end to try to keep everything from sliding off um, in case anyone else wants to try out these tiny needles. That's how you kind of keep things from falling off. So with the yarn pulled in front, you're going to move this last stitch onto your right needle. Just slip it on over and then you're going to pick up this pearl bump right here. Also, it can be called a collar, I've heard. So you're just gonna put your left needle right up into that pearl bump. And you're going to purl it. So now you have two stitches coming from one. And then you put them both back onto the left needle. And you can see you got the two stitches coming from the one. So now holding everything, I'm going to turn. I want my yarn in the back because I'm knitting again. So I'm going to knit now to the last stitch before this twin or double stitch that I made initially. So you now have one double stitch here and one double stitch over here and if it helps you can um, always add markers that way you can always clearly see your double stitches so I'm just going to knit all the way across
okay so here's the double that I initially made so I'm here at the stitch before the double and I'm going to make another double the same exact way so here it is and I'm going to go into the bottom leg here of that stitch it's kind of hard to tell but I already have chocolate stitches underneath so that's the leg that I need to go into right there slide it onto the left needle and knit that leg and put it right back on the left needle so now you have your first double here and your second double right here and turn and again I'm going to purl to the last stitch before that double that I made over here on the left Curling across all the way to, let's see, here's the double right here coming out of that one stitch. So I want to make this one right here a double. So I'm going to knit this one, get it out of the way. Okay. Again, here's the double right there. Yarn in front. And I'm going to slide that stitch onto the right needle. And I kind of have to twist my whole hand to get into that purl bump and purl it. So now you can see I have two stitches and I'm going to put them on the left needle. So now I have basically two double mint twins. <laughs> First double and second double. And I'm going to turn again back to the right side, the knit side. And now what I'm going to do is repeat knitting to the last stitch before that double and making a new double. And then when I turn, purling to the last stitch before the double and making that one a double. And I keep doing that until I have all 11 stitches on the right. They're now doubles. All 11 stitches on the left are now doubles or will become doubles and everything in the center stays plain knit stitches the 10. So I'm going to knit across to the last stitch before that double stitch or you can call it a twin stitch. And here's my center. This is three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. 
the brightness on my cameras all the way up. Stop moving arm. There we go. Okay. So I have my two double mint twins so far. Double one and double two. I want to make a double three, a double stitch right here, or a twin stitch. So again, I'm going to go into this bottom leg right down here, pull it up onto the left needle, and go ahead and knit into it, and then pop it right back onto the left needle. So now I have three double stitches. Now I'm going to purl all the way to the last stitch before the double stitch. Slide my stitch marker and go through the plain 10, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 2 double stitches right here. You can see that right there. Now I need to make this one a double. Yarn in front. Pull the stitch onto the right needle. Get up into the purl bump and purl it. And then put it right back onto the left needle. So now I have three double stitches. And I'm going to turn and repeat. Here are the three double stitches. I'm going to make this a double stitch. Bottom leg, lift up, knit, and put it right back on the left needle. Now I have four. Turn. And Pearl.
Okay. Here are the three doubles. Make another double here, yarn in front, pull the stitch over, get into that full bump, and purl it. Okay, now I have a total of four double stitches. Turn the work and work the knit side. Work the plain 10 stitches right through. Make sure that you definitely stop before um, you hit that double stitch because you don't want to all of a sudden knit the single and then split your double. Make sure that you stop at that last stitch before the double. So here's the double coming out of that one knit stitch at the bottom. So I need to make the single stitch a double. And if you find that this slides too close to the edge, make sure that you put some pressure on it using your middle finger if you can, if you're knitting continental. Go ahead and turn. And purl. your marker and purl the 10. Oops. Okay. Four. Slide that stitch marker, purl it across to the last stitch before your double stitch. Okay, here it is, right there. And you can also feel it on your fingers. The thickness of these stitches compared to this single knit stitch. These are definitely thicker. Yarn in front, slide over, and find that little purl bump right there. Pull it up, purl it and then slide the two stitches right back over and then turn. So to take a quick look at what's happening, you're matching your twins on each side. One, two, three, four, five. And on this side we have one, two, three, four, five. Five doubles or twins, whatever you want to call them. They match on both sides. And let me grab some more yarn here. And we're doing English style. It's the same exact thing, nothing different. Just go ahead and knit. Slide 
slide the stitch marker if you're using it. Go through the 10, two, Slide your marker and keep going to the last stitch before the twin stitch or the double stitch. Okay, here it is right there. So make this a double. One, bottom right leg, pull up, and I'm still holding it with my middle finger on the back so nothing slides. Push that needle in, and then knit, and then slide it right back over. Let me make sure I didn't catch anything. There we go. And turn. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and move my needles so they don't get in my way when I do English style on this row. I don't do English style too often. Only when I uh, do color work will I work with both hands um, and do English in my right while doing continental simultaneously in my left. But sometimes I do change it up and do just English style for a few rows, just to give my hands a break, so to speak. So I'm gonna go ahead and purl. Now this I'm very careful with because I don't want any stitches to fall and purling continental is just extra motion that personally I'm not too fond of I can't go as fast but just in case someone's an English knitter let me go ahead and show how to do it if an English knitter is even watching. I'm always amazed watching someone knit English style and they zip through like it's nothing. I'm like, how does your hand go that fast? stitch marker. Here's the twin right here, and here's the single. Gotta make that a twin. Twin or a double, however you want to call it. So I'm gonna slide it over. Get up inside that pearl bump right there. And pearl. So now I have that 
double I've made. And then one more time. And I'm going to go back to continental knitting. It looks like my needle slipped off, so I'm going to gently put those back on and make sure I didn't lose anything, which I don't think I did because this one was my first, this multi. But let's just check. One, two, three, four, five, six. And on this side, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay. We'll grab some tea. Just knit across, just like before. Oops, went too far. I went right up to the double. Don't want to do that. So here's that double. Here's the single. You can see there's only one loop coming out of it. Just dig into that bottom leg and do it just like you've been doing it before. Turn and purl.
see here, there's two yarn loops. Work this one. remember you're making a mirror image on the left and right so you should always have the same amount of double stitches on the left and right as soon as you get back on the knit side Make sure you go right behind, right into that stitch to pull it correctly. It's getting kind of tight with my stitch markers here. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Get that out of the way. I'm going to undo that because it doesn't feel right. Okay. There we go. It's getting 
awfully tight in here. There we go. Making sure it looks right from this side. Something about that just doesn't feel right, so I'm going to redo it again. And this is how you would undo it. So I'm just going to go back in, undo that pearl. That's how you undo it. You just kind of get that pearl bump to pop off of the left stick, left knitting needle. Okay, so I'm back to my double and my single. Pull it. There's the collar. Pearl. I want to make sure I hold that tight. There we go. Feels better. And then knit again. So we have a double right here. Make this a double. Turn. Okay. Just go slide my stitch marker. Pearl these ten. Ten. Slide my marker, and there's that twin. There's the single. Okay. See what we have. On the right, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven double stitches. We know we have our ten in the center between the stitch markers. And then we have here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven on each side, eleven here, and two, four, six, eight, ten, and eleven here. Matching left and right side with the ten in the center. Now, it's time for the heel turn. So what we're going to do is knit to the very first twin stitch that we come to. And we're going to knit it as one stitch. So I'm going to go ahead and slide the marker. And this is why I said initially you don't necessarily need the markers unless it makes you feel comfortable because you can see all of your stitches. So that's one, two, 
10 plain stitches will always remain. Now, we knit to the first twin, or the first double. Here it is, and we're going to knit it as one whole stitch. Now, what you want to do is stay on the knit side and you're going to look at your next double stitch or twin stitch. You can see it right here. You see that bottom leg right there at an angle? You're going to take this bottom right leg of this twin stitch, put it on the left needle and knit it and put it right back on the left needle to make a triple stitch. Right needle into this bottom right leg, put it up on the left needle and knit just that one leg and put it back on the left needle. Now when you look at it, You've got three stitches coming out of one at the bottom. That's your triple. Now you can turn. And you're going to now purl to the first twin stitch that you come to. right back through the 10 just like usual okay slide my marker here's my first double or twin right here I'm going to purl this as one stitch. So yarn in the front, get underneath both of those legs, so to speak, right underneath, and go ahead and purl it as one. Now, don't turn because you want to make this double or twin stitch right here, you want to make it a triple. So you're going to move this twin or double stitch to your right needle and you're going to purl this purl bump right in here and then put it all back on the left needle. So this is how you'll do this. Yarn in the front, put the double stitch onto the right needle. And you see that pearl bump right here? Pull it up and pearl it. So now you have three and it's really clustered in there, but it's three. And put them all right back on the left needle. So you can see Oops, you've got one, two, and three coming out of this bottom pearl. Now you can turn. And again, you're going to knit across And keep knitting through the 10. See, 
slide the stitch marker if you're using it. You're going to knit as we have to the triple stitch. So this is now a single. Go ahead and knit it. Here's the triple right here. And you're going to knit the triple stitch as one stitch. So you really have to push in there to get through all three legs and then knit. So again, push through all three and knit them as one. Now you have the double and you're going to make another triple out of it. So again, here's the double. Here's that bottom right leg. Go ahead and pull it up to the left needle, knit, whoops, without splitting the yarn. Go ahead and knit it and pop it back onto the left needle. And now you have one, two, three, you have a triple. Now you can turn. And again, we're going to do the same method, purl across, go right through the standard 10, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, Get my little milk and cookie guy to move. Now this is a single. You can see that here. I'm going to purl it because I want to get right up against this triple stitch. So when we turned, you're going to purl to the triple stitch all the way right up to it. And you can see they're kind of jam-packed in there, but you've got one, two, and three. And you're going to purl the whole triple stitch as one. And now you've got your double stitch, which they tend to crisscross each other sometimes. Let me see if I can get it to pull apart. There it is. You can see the double right there. You're going to make this double or twin right here. You're going to make it a triple. Yarn in front. Put the whole thing, the whole double or twin, whatever you want to call it. Put it right on to the right needle. With the left needle, pick up the purl bump and purl it. And then put all three stitches now, which are really jam packed in there. One, two, and three. It's hard to see. But put them back on the left needle, and now you can turn. And you're going to now repeat until you have one double stitch on each needle, left and right side, because then you'll end up making them triple stitches. So let's go ahead and continue. Knit across to the triple stitch.
And there's my 10. I'm going to knit two a triple stitch. And there it is. Go into the bottom right leg. Oh, I'm sorry. I was thinking making it a triple stitch. This is your triple stitch here. Knit it as one stitch. Knit the triple stitches as though they are one stitch. Go through all three. Apologies if I just confused anyone that may be watching. Knit the triples as one. Make the doubles now triples. Now pull up the bottom leg to make this double a triple. Pop that back on. Now you have the three. And turn. Grab some tea. Keep purling until you get to the triple. And here it is. It's like a tiny little fan, but it's there. One, two, one, two, and there's the third one. Purl the triple as one. And now you've got the double right here. Yarn in front. Slide it over, go into the pearl bump, or you can also call it the collar. Make sure I'm in just the collar or the pearl bump there. Go ahead and pearl, and then slide that triple onto the left needle, and turn. And repeat. Knit to the triple. Great thing about these little needles, I'm not stabbing myself in the center of my hand, but they are tiny. So you definitely have to take your time holding them when you have this many stitches. Okay. right up on top of that triple make it a single now make a triple there it is turn I think I'm going to end up taking off these stitch markers because I won't need them because all I'm doing is knitting and purling right up to the triple stitches. I don't need to count the 10 stitches any longer. Here we go. This little cluster is your triple. This 
little guy here. Double. You can see his bump has popped out. That's your heel turn. And go right all the way over to your triple. So I'm gonna go ahead and let my stitch markers fall. Don't need them. Don't need to count the center stitches anymore to make sure everything's even. There's the other one. Okay. something. Let me do that again. There.
，然后呢，还是去直播，还是 Face One， 还是去 Double， 还是 Get Triple。And this is just where I tied yarn together because I had to cut it at some point and put it back together. So just ignore that little bit. And honestly, if I wanted to, I could go ahead and knit it in there like that, but I'm not going to. Okay, here we go. That's one, double, make it a triple. Make sure I'm pulling just that collar and nothing else. There we go. Your triple stitch. Okay. 
the yarn. I'm going to redo that. There we go. Trumpets were getting to be a little bit too loud. Maybe to turn down the volume. Something about knitting and having jazz music on in the background is just super relaxing. Definitely makes me sleepy, which is probably why I knit in the night more than I do in the day. House is quiet. I can let my brain kind of empty out. Here's your triple. Make it a single. This would be your double. Make it a triple. And then get it right back on the left needle and turn. As I mentioned, knitting at night with jazz music in the quiet, it after a long 12 or maybe even longer hour work day, it helps to clear out the cobwebs in my head. Okay, here's a triple. And here's double. Make it a triple. Go ahead and turn, and you can see I'm going to make it match on this side. So you've got a triple here and a double. This will end up being a triple on this side. Want to see something? Yep. one is a triple. Just got to pull it apart to see it. There it is. One, two, and three. Make it one whole stitch. Purl it as one. And then make this Double, a triple, pop it back on the left needle, 
Let's see what we have. Okay, so on the right side, you'll have your double. And then we just made that triple right here. You can see it. It's almost like a little flower blooming. And then all these plain knit stitches all the way across. To, this is the first double that we made. And right here is one, two, three. That's the triple. You can even see that bottom right leg to show you. And everything else just looks plain old knit stitches. So let's continue and knit across. Grab some tea. Nothing better than a hot tea and knitting. Definitely decaf though. I do not like caffeine. Okay, here we go. Here's that last triple stitch that we need to turn into one before we make another one. Okay, make this a triple stitch. So you've got your first of last, however you want to say that, <laughs> long day, brain is oozing out of my ears. That's going to be your last triple stitch on that side. Put it across to go do the other one. Here's that blooming triple, curl it as one. Oops. Okay, and here's the last double that you're going to purl. Pick that collar or that purl bump up. Go ahead and purl it. And you want the three stitches back on the left needle. So now you only have one triple here, right there out of that one stitch, and all the way across is plain stitches to another triple stitch, one on each side. Now, because I'm doing a contrast heel, if you were not doing a contrast heel, you would not have done uh, the weaving in of the yarn like I did. And you don't even have to do that. You can just start knitting with the contrast color and then weave in your ends later. But that just kind of helps me lock in the tail um, in the beginning. Less weaving in at the end. 
So if you're not doing a contrast heel, you're just going to keep going around. But I'm going to start with my contrast, my main color. Using a contrast heel and you have your triple stitch on left and right and you're done with the heel basically now. Put your main color in now and knit so that your main color winds up on the front of your sock. Do not use your contrast, what you're using currently. So I'm going to put the contrast color down. So I'm going to put down the contrast color for the heel. I'm going to go ahead and get a tail going with my main color here. Get some yarn off of this. Should probably do my reminder videos during the day, but I'm working all day, so I can't really do that. And the weekends during the day, they can get kind of busy just trying to get stuff done. So I'm going to give myself a decent amount of main color tail here. And I'm going to just start knitting. And these are just plain knit stitches again. And if you wanted to, you could get real fancy um, and try and weave in, but I'm not even going to do all that. I'm just going to start knitting. Plain old knit stitches, nothing new. You're still finishing up this heel, but if you're doing contrast heel, toe, cuff, you put your main color back in now, like I'm doing. I want to make that as clear as possible since I said what I said and that was completely backwards. Again, apologies. Okay. So we're coming up to the triple stitch and like before you're going to knit it as one plain stitch. I'm going to put that little guy down and pull cable needle back into working position. And I'm going to turn this all around. Okay. I'm going to pick up my little knitting needle again and I'm going to just knit right on across okay and I'm just gently doing it because I don't want this back end to magically slide out which it should not but I'd rather be safe than sorry. Okay. Knit straight across. That's where I wove in my contrast color. Just make sure to pull that out of the way. Oops. 
Okay. Now remember, this is the instep, the front of the foot. So I don't have any triple stitches over here. These were all plain knit stitches. Okay. There's my main color. Still using it. And this is the tail where I cut the main color off originally. So I'm just going to put that to the side. Got another tail, another tail. I'm going to shove these as best as I can down in the center just to get them out of the way. Now this is the contrast color of the heel. I just haven't cut it yet, but I'm going to ignore it, give it a little tug. And you can see that contrast is my last triple stitch. I've worked my way around back to it. So I'm gonna grab another little needle or I could take my larger needle going to go ahead, whoops, made a mistake, take your triple just like you used to and make it into one. Don't do what my brain just tried to do, which was knit the first stitch. Don't do that. Knit the triple as one whole stitch. And it looks like I kind of split the yarn, so I'm going to do that again. Yep. Slide that through. Triple stitch is now gone. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead, and that's pulling because of that tail down there. So I'll have to weave that in and tighten everything up. Go right on across. And so if you're able to weave in the ends as you go, you can just pull and everything just closes as you knit. But if not, you have to just tug on it and then go back and weave in the ends. Personal preference on how you do it. Come on, there we go. around one whole time and this would be what I consider to be the beginning of my round. Because I have the working yarn at the back is the heel so I would consider this the beginning of the round for me. We have completed the shadow wrap heel in real time. The entire thing from start to finish. So here it is. No holes. With my finger in there trying to push without taking the stitches off the needles. No holes whatsoever. This part is the plain old 10 stitches that we kept going back and forth over. And here's the other side. Pushing. No holes. And at the intersections you just pull gently your tails and then weave them in and you won't have any holes. So let me go ahead and put everything back on magic glue and then I can continue and I'll cut this contrast 
all right because I won't need it any longer not until I get to the toe um, and I've done a reminder video on how um, I do my toes from cuff to toe and I also have a reminder video on how to, to start a sock from toe up which is fun but I don't know how to do the shadow wrap heel from the toe up. Maybe I can do a reminder video on that if I can figure that out. But this is the shadow wrap heel. Nice and simple and super clean. So I know this will help me out most definitely because normally I don't do short row heels. Um, I do like the heel flap and gusset because it gives that extra cushion on the inside. Something about the, uh, it's the slip stitches that you do in the heel flap and gusset that gives just a little bit more cushion. This will be thin feeling, just like the rest of the sock, you won't get cushion in the heel so that's why I don't do short row heels very often but this one I think is my new go-to because it's quick it's simple it's clear yeah so this is the shadow wrap heel in real time hope this helps someone else